Hey everybody, welcome back to World History with Mr. Finn. As you can see here, we are coming to you, not live, but on YouTube, from Miss Faust's room. So we're switching up locations. But let's get going because we're finishing up our chapter uh, on the Americas. And we have looked at tribes in North America. We looked at our early uh, Central American, Mesoamerica, civilizations like the Toltecs and Olmecs and Mayan, all of which had fallen by the time that the Spanish from Europe had come to America. We did talk about how the Spanish came to America and met with the Aztecs and how that did not go so well coming together. Uh, and now we are on to our final group and that is the Incas. So we are talking about the Inca today. Now, here are some fun fact quiz things that might come up. The Inca are gonna be located in South America. Located in South America, so it's a little bit of a ways away. Uh, Central America is connected to South America, but they are going to be on the west coast uh, or west, western, say west South America. Uh, the Incan Empire is going to develop high in the mountains. So another quiz, quiz, quiz thing. Uh, it is going to be in the Andes is the name of the mountain range in the Andes Mountains. Uh, and the Andes Mountains are really, really high. Um, and so this is a very uh, remote civilization, hard to get to, but the Spanish are still going to be searching America for these civilizations. Why are the Spanish so interested in the America and meeting these uh, Native American groups like the Inca? Because the Inca have something like the Aztecs. Gold. Quiz, quiz, quiz question. What do the Spanish conquistadors really want more than anything at all? Uh, gold. And so they, once the gold starts coming back from the interactions with the Aztecs, as we move another five years from then, uh, the Inca, the Incans are going to come into contact with the Spanish as well, because the Spanish start to go, hey, there's a lot of gold here. Let's just start looking around for everything. Um, but before we get to the, the end of the Incas, let's talk about a few things about the Incans. Uh, one, again, they're in South America on the west side. They're up in the Andes mountain range. Uh, they, had a very, they, they had a very advanced system of, of like government, you would say. So the Incas, some of the main things that you would want to know about the Inca that might be on quiz stuff is, um, you know, their government, uh, they still had the same uh, leadership like the Aztecs, or even the Mayans, or a lot of these cultures did, which they would have a king who was uh, descended from the gods, a god himself, absolute ruler. However, what the Incans do with their government and the structure of it is they create, uh, their government uh, operates or runs um, from communication. And what is that communication? How does that work? If I'm going to be even more specific, this commute runs from these communication posts. They have a large system of roads. Roads and what we would call runners. So here's how it works. The Incan Empire, this is a lot like Rome too. Remember, Rome set up a, a, almost a system of highways, paved roads built with stones on top, um, and they could get from one place to another very quickly. The Incans are the same way. So we're talking about the Incans in a very complex understanding of, hey, if we're going to have this huge empire, we need to be able to have information getting to us from all ends of it. And so they create this huge system of roads uh, through the mountains, uh, they have runners who go place to place and there are stops along the roads to get the messages quicker uh, back to the head of the government and the people who are in charge. And so they're going to have a very tight rein on their empire and you need this to be uh, productive or to have a strong uh, an empire that can, can last and you can control. Um, some of the other things about the Incans. They have an odd system of record keeping called Kipu with a Q. Uh, I want to make sure I spell it right, because Kipu always, always gets me. It is still a U, huh? All right. Q. 
he poo. This is a, uh, it's, not, it's not a writing system. It's um, knots. I'll, ju I'll just write out the definition. Knots in string to keep records. So this is something else we, I mean, in world history, we see this a lot where uh, because different civilizations exist in different places, grow up at different times, come together at different times, at different eras, in different centuries, you get a lot of different things. So we had like glyphic writing where it's pictures meaning words. We have phonetic uh, alphabets where like the letters actually are sounds. Uh, like we have a phonetic uh, alphabet. Like our letters in our alphabet make sounds. We put those sounds together to make words and you can read it. Kipu <laughs> is knots in strings to keep records. So it would look something like this. So you would have some, something like this where all of the strings are uh, tied to. And then when, within that, you would have different knots tied onto the string or with the string, you know, tie a knot with a string. That would mean different things. And so this is their system of record keeping, which is, you know, this is the, this is the thing about world history and different civilizations is you or I might see it and have no idea what it means and only the people there understands what it means. And this is something that makes hieroglyphics or the glyphic writing of the Mayans and the Aztecs or Kipu challenging for us to figure out exactly what it means. You need to decipher it, uh, unlock the code to understand what these mean so that you can read it because those people aren't around anymore in the, in the same way um, that would understand and be able to explain it to us. Uh, but that's another interesting thing about the Inca. Uh, they were a very strong empire. They did have a lot of gold. They, did, they did, were polytheistic. They had a system of record keeping. Uh, they had a large capital city in Cuzco. Capital city, this might be a quiz, quiz question is in Cuzco. Actually, I think I already said that, but whatever. Maybe I didn't actually. Either way, now it's there, I know for sure. Uh, capital city is in Cuzco. Uh, so they had a very elaborate system, a very large scale city, large scale empire. They were a very strong empire. They dominated the other groups around them in the western half of uh, South America. And before I get into the conquest of them, let me just make sure. Yep. Uh, so, as far as the structure of everyday life, they would have the same thing. Uh, men were, you know, ra boys were raised to, you know, get an education but be warriors. Um, the women uh, would be at home. They had um, peasants. They had a complicated system, social structure. And this goes the same as the Mayans and the Aztecs uh, and all these groups. They're very similar because they all are in the same area geographically and they all kind of come from the same lineage, meaning that they're all very, they're the same in the way of how they basically operate day-to-day -day life and things like that. Um, and so you can imagine what I'm about to say with the Inca and their interactions with the Spanish. So as we said, the Spanish are really interested in gold. And the Incas, Basically, they're going to come into contact. They're going to try and you know, fight the Spanish. This is not Cortez. Uh, the conquistador related to the Incans is Pizarro. Pizarro is the um, got it all in there. Conquistador, which again, just in case, let me get it all in here, is a Spanish. a Spanish soldier. So a conquistador is a Spanish soldier. Uh, this time around it is Pizarro. Let me tell you about Pizarro very quickly. Um, let me get some room. He is a conquistador. Um, Pizarro is mean. I mean Cortez was mean. They, the, the Spanish treated the, the Aztecs and the Incas uh, as subhuman almost because to them they were, I guess the word would be like uncouth, uncivilized. Uh, 
and this is something that happens when you bring two groups of people together. The Spanish think you should be one way, and the Incans and Aztecs are like, no, this is the way we are. You should be this way. It's strange. You're different than us. And so everyone starts judging one another. So Pizarro, like Cortez, looked down upon the Native Americans who they came into contact with because they felt, hey, you're not as advanced as us with weapons. We have horses. You know, we have found Christianity. Uh, you you know, live your way and it's different from ours, so it's terrible. Um, so Pizarro is going to be, he's gonna be very cruel. He is going to, uh, he's gonna murder, we'll use the term king, he was a god king. Um, and this is how he does it. This is not something that we need to write down for notes. Got itchy nose. Uh, for notes, but so the story is Pizarro says, Listen, you got to bring me like 30 rooms full of gold and silver, and I will let your king go and I'll let your king live. And the people are like, Well, we love our God king, he is descended from the gods, he is a god himself, he is you know, like he is the greatest thing, so we will get this. And so they actually get all of these rooms full of gold for the Spanish, gold and silver. Uh, and then what does Pizarro do? Well, if he's cruel, what do you think? He murders the king anyway, after getting this. So he's like, he's just a terrible, terrible I mean, the, the interaction between Europe and the Native Americans coming together always, you know, it's rare that you find it, you know, Thanksgiving, <laughs> I guess, in North America, uh, where that's only in the very beginning of the English coming to America. But most times the Europeans that come here are going to look down upon the Native Americans and it's going to cause issues um, as, you can as you can imagine, Pizarro uh, killing the king and plundering the Incan Empire of all of its gold and silver. Um, they are going to dominate the Incans. They're going to, uh, the, in, in a way, they destroy the Incans. But really what happens with the Inca is this, based on what we see here, is the Inca are going to, I mean, the best way to say it is run and survive. So, the Spanish destroy the empire of the Incas. However, after this Incan empire is destroyed as far as its system of roads and government and daily life and trade and uh, you know, astronomy and all of the things that all of these uh, empires had, uh, the Incans will still be a people. They will just not be an empire. So basically they say, listen, we're up in the mountains. The Spanish aren't going to come through all the mountains. Let's just go. We know the mountains better than them. We're talking like thousands of feet. The Andes Mountains are a huge mountain range. So the Incans are going to essentially run and survive, spread out in different you know, areas and different groups, but the Incan Empire will fall uh, to the Spanish and Pizarro uh, you know, in the 1500s, leading to, again, where we end up today, which is um, really when you get into, other than you know, the Portuguese will come as well, but we don't, we don't get too much into the Portuguese yet. Um, but what we're going to see a lot in modern-day Mexico, modern-day Latin America, and other areas uh, is uh, Spanish. It's called influence. So it's called Spanish influence, meaning that the Spanish culture, the Spanish aren't going to go away. The Spanish are here. They take gold, they start shipping it back to Spain. Spain becomes a very powerful country, the most powerful country in all of Europe in the 1500s because it has all of this gold and silver. Um, but the Spanish, because it has a steady stream of gold, aren't going to leave. And so we see the Spanish influence like we talked about last class where you know, if you go to Mexico, you'll speak Spanish, there's Christianity. Uh, there's very little in the way of you know, the Native American culture within these groups. So the Europeans that come here dominate the culture um, and turn the, this area into basically colonies that they control and own. Um, so we will see more of that as we move forward because we're about to hit, soon we're gonna hit the age of exploration in Europe because Think about this, if you're England, if you're France, if you're you know, Portugal, I just said, if you're any of these other countries in Europe and you go, look at Spain. Spain went and discovered these new continents. And when they discovered these new continents, they found people there. And now they have gold and silver. They're the richest country in the world. Oh my goodness, we 
want to do that as well. So unfortunately, we are going to see Europe try to exploit the Americas and say, listen, it's there, there's gold there, let's get rich like Spain, and other, it's going to spur on other countries to say, let's start going out on ships, let's start seeing around the world, let's start to explore and find stuff so that we can be rich like Spain. Uh, so we'll get to that coming up. But for today, let's just go ahead and give me the notes uh, for your assignment, and uh, we'll be moving on back to where we're at, 1500s, moving forward now. Uh, most of it is going to be what's happening with interactions from Europe to America, um, new revolutions in Europe, new things happening here in America, and that's probably about where we're going to stay. Africa comes into it a little bit as well. Um, but get that to me today for attendance and participation purposes, and I will see you next class.